My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you for having me. My name is Matthew Ferguson. I'm tuning in from Vancouver, BC, Canada. And uh, uh, this is actually, I got to say before we start, Vahid, you're the first person to reach out to me and ask anything in, in this uh, you know format. So thank you for my first interview. Definitely. Awesome. I'm excited to have you here. So here's my question. I was watching around, I was looking around on your IG page, and I ended up on a link, and it was so funny. I've been watching a lot of Thinking Gorge, Napoleon Hill on a specific topic, and I get on that video, and the first thing it is is Napoleon Hill talking, and then it's Earl Nightingale. I'm all like, what are the odds of this happening? Me randomly landing on a video, and that video is Napoleon Hill and Earl Nightingale. It's crazy. Just, I, I mean, I don't believe in accidents. So listen, my question is for business entrepreneurs. As a sure. business owner, entrepreneur, what do you think is some of the difficult and challenging things that entrepreneurs need to go through? Okay, no, that's a fair question. Um, to give you some insight to the answer I'll give you, I, I have a bit of a sales background. Um, I was a marketing specialist. I did door-to-door. -door. I had a big office, a, you know, ceiling to floor glass wall kind of thing and I left it very quickly because the model that I was being told to follow was for analogy swim to a client and sell 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 and usually when you swim to a client like that when you when you rush over there you know you're you're desperate you're out of breath and uh, you really want to make a sale if you turn the mindset to your yourself who who are you selling for not who are you going to sell to, but who are you selling for? If, if an entrepreneur can wrap their mind around you are selling for yourself and only one person ever needs to say yes, you, the one doing the selling, needs to be constantly saying yes to yourself. And as you go about, you won't be as frantic, you won't be as desperate, you'll be more efficient, and you'll attract more people who say yes to you. I don't know if that answers your question. That answers my question. So here is... How do I get to that mindset? Is it something that I got to repeat? Is it something that I got to be around? Is it something, so let's say the company says you got to sell this way and these are the presentation, you don't believe it. So I got to walk away from the company? Mm. Like I want practical ways of you want getting, like this kind of thing, eh? Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure that, you know, when, how do you shift the mindset? Because you can't just, some people have the ability to shift their mindset very fast. But some people are not used to it. They're not accustomed to it. So how do I shift my mindset to have the correct mindset? Okay, well, um, so that nothing happens instantly. But for a very quick adjustment, usually the best thing to do is to take a biological reset, a deep breath, at least two or three good deep breaths. And then you say to yourself the simple question, why am I doing this? Right. And then how can you take what the company is telling you to do and for your effort to make it successful? And just by going through this calming process very quickly and then asking yourself some very quick questions, you'll find you come up with answers in yourself and you can just have a little faith in yourself and your activity. So if you say to yourself, oh, you know, I don't like what the company is telling me to do, do I walk away from the company? Well, you have to first ask, why did you find yourself in front of this company? And then if you're going to walk, if, if walking away is something that bubbles up inside there, maybe that's something to listen to. But if you do feel you're in front of the right company and you do feel that what it's going to bring you is worth it, then just calm down and ask why you're doing it. That shift in mindset should be a gradual process over the course of years. But in any given moment, we still have to do that. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, and, and, and I've been, I've been, I've been studying that. I've been trying to find out why some individuals in the same company, some of them are making a lot of money, some of them are not. Now, my analogy was some of them are willing to do selling whatever it takes to do it, which is sometimes good if the product is right, the, the, the customer service is right, whatever you're doing is right and it resonates with you, more power to you, keep doing it and scale it up. But if it's not, then what are the solutions that you got to do? So here's my other question. How do we keep track of our mindset to know that we have the correct one? 
because it's very difficult to, because it almost becomes you doubting yourself. You know, you asked the question that led to my book. Um, I four years ago, I was in a really rough state. I uh, I, I left my my uh, partner at the time, and then she disappeared with the kid. And uh, for about eight months, I had no idea what was going on. And and you 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 say, how do we keep that mindset going? I I cho- I, I chose to to write down any time I had a good thought, I just write it down. And I'd, and I'd tell myself what I need to be doing to move forward. So I went up to networking events. And then I met someone in a networking event who, anytime he asked me a question and I gave him a response, an honest, sincere response, he said, you know, that's a really good answer. You should probably write a book. And I, I'm not going to write a book. You know, I'm 27. My life's in the, in the crapshoot. And uh, I'm, I'm just barely hanging on of lunch money at the event, right? And he goes, no, no, no. You got some good insights, some good thoughts. And, and I said, I don't know how to do that. My hands, I had all these excuses because my hands are broken and things. I'm dyslexic. And he goes, just stop. He goes, write the title, whatever pops in mind. Write a couple chapters, whatever pops in mind. Write a few paragraphs for each chapter and then just expand them. And I thought, you know, that might be a good way to hold on to some of the better perspectives that I'm desperately trying to hold on to so I don't go back to alcohol, so I don't go back to toxic friendships. So I don't shrug and go to a corner store as my job for the rest of my life. Um, so I did. I, 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 took him to, I took him to heart. I did his process. And what I was left with with, um, you know, shameless plug, was um, basically a snapshot in the worst mindset I ever had of all the good stuff that was going on in there. And by focusing on that and cultivating it, and then later on looking back at it, I helped solidify those positive states, those positive perspectives. And um, I mean, it doesn't read like an expert novel. It's a very short, easily digestible thing because I had to read it. And, uh, you know, being as I am with all my challenges, I wrote it so that it's chunkable. And at the, each, at the end of each chunk, there's a good quote from someone who's far smarter than myself, far more experienced than myself. And, uh, and the quote is usually relevant to the, to the better perspective I was trying to hold on to. So, again, I don't know if that answers your question. but uh, No, I that does. That... Because I, I feel like... I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs... I mean, Napoleon Hill talks about it in Three Feet from Gold. It's probably... It's within the first 10, 15 pages of the book, depending on which version of the book you're reading. It's Three Feet from Gold. I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners, when they have those negative thoughts or non-productive thoughts, the positive is is the underdog. So you got this much negative, this much positivity, and the most logical thing, not emotional, the most logical thing is to quit. It's like investors, you know? You go to stock market, the stock is 100 bucks, the stock is at 50. What are you going to do? You lost 50%. You sell it off not to lose another 50%, right? Logically, it makes sense to give in, give up, throw the towel in, say thank you very much, or this is a sign from a higher power that I shouldn't do this. You know, I've seen people say that. This is a sign from God. You know, that he doesn't want me to do it. The universe is telling me something, all of that stuff. But then sometimes I look back and I'm like, well, If you believe in the universe, how did the universe get you there in the first place? So you got there in the first place, so you can't take this part and say universe is right, and then take this portion of it and say universe was wrong, because that would be retarded. You know, now we're having a a little bit of a yo-yo going over here. We don't know which was going. So to me, it's like, how do we catch somebody? How do we help that entrepreneur that's about to commit business suicide. Business How do you suicide. Hold them yeah. on and yeah. say, "Listen, dude, uh, you gotta hang in two more weeks. Uh, yeah. You gotta hang in two more years. I don't know, whatever the number is, right?" So, how do you, how do we hold that? Because if we do, if there was a policing department in the entrepreneurship world, right, we'll be making those phone calls saying, "Listen, your ass better not give up this week, okay? We know it's been going hard, but this week you ain't gonna give up, homie." You got to go another two more weeks, right? So, how would our how do we how would our world be changed if you would have done that? 
Oh, and that's that's the question that drives me right there is how can we get everybody to hold on to their their true desire and work towards it? Uh anytime someone makes a decision to move towards something good for them, it just in my observations, let alone my own personal life, immediately challenges are met. Like immediately there will be barriers, challenges, trials. As soon as you say I want this shiny nice thing, here comes out of left field a challenge for you, right? So when I think people understand that that's just an inevitability, they're more inclined to push through. A lot of people who think they know a thing usually don't know anything about that thing. I I'm sitting here giving you answers. These are just bleh, word vomits from experience. I don't know a thing. I will never claim to know a thing. I'll say what I've seen, what I've experienced. And in the sense of how do we get people to hold on, to push through? It it comes down to like you mentioned earlier, some guys get all the business and then other guys they get none of the business. The two differences might be how consistent are they? It's not so much their their ethics or what practices they're doing, but how consistently they're doing it. The guy who's, you know, he doesn't care about anyone and he goes, "Oh, you know, he's he's banging out calls left, right and center, left, right and center and he doesn't care about anyone." He might be doing good because of his consistency factor. If the other guy who's a really good guy, he's up there, he's making calls, he's doing the exact same activity, but he spends another 20, 30 minutes on each call, right? Maybe he takes a break because he's so emotionally involved, right? The consistency starts to dwindle. not because of any kind of compass but because of a, a an almost a consistent factor so knowing there's challenges always and then knowing there's practices you can tweak and shift if you if you put those two together and you create you know a conscious person who's aware of what their efforts are 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 going to take so that they can lead to their desired outcome and i hope that again i hope that helps answer no that that answer right. i mean listen whatever you lack in talent and skills you definitely make up for it in hard work because i've seen so many people make it that weren't that didn't have the traditional schooling that we consider the key element in our society but it's changing the key elements for being successful but we can see that that is not the case but there i have seen people were literally the difference between them making it and not making it was that extra 20 minutes 30 minutes extra 1 hour extra work that they did so that's right that's sometimes now with the same token if that was the case if hard work was the case and it was the only factor in success then a lot of construction people work very hard if you're building a big building you're working there's a lot of labor intense work so they should be all millionaires So it's not just hard work. No. There are other factors in it, but once you have the right factors and you put the extra work on it, go in the extra mile just like Napoleon Hill talks about it, I think I don't know what it does physically, metaphysically, consciously, I don't know what it does, but I know it works. It's like yeah. gravity. I don't need to know how it works and where does it come. Now, I could I'm trying to do studies on it to figure it out, right? Yeah. but i know it works yeah i know it works i know it exists i know there's some power in in play right yeah. so and that's what i tell logical people you don't need to you don't need to know how a miracle happened you just need to recognize that a miracle did happen that's right i i want to interject for a moment i i used to be a construction worker i started you know pushing wheelbarrows then i got my hammer i got my tool belt and then i was doing skilled trades and for the roughly 10 9 10 years that i was doing that i worked harder than i ever worked in my life and at the end of that road when uh when finally you know injury job switching happened i was i was nowhere i was right where i started at 13 and uh it's like you say you know if you the hard work made it i'd be a millionaire but it's like i said earlier too it's it's those factors like you mentioned tweaking right you can take hard work But if you apply all your hard work here and you never look over here, well there's there's your 3 feet from gold like you say, right? You put all your hard work here for a whole life and you never spent one moment of hard work in learning something different. 
right? And you say you're studying to figure it out, figure out the miracles. I think you can do it. Anything's quantifiable with enough focus. Definitely. No, I agree with that 100%. But to me, there's a, the other side of it too that, you know, a lot of people want to go figure things out and then convince themselves that it does exist or it is true. I sometimes look at it, maybe I'm different, but I look at it and I'm like, is it really worth my time? If I can see the proof with my own eyes, I can touch it, it's there. Do I really need to go and spend two, three years to, based on math, physics, equations, all that stuff, prove why this happens? Or can I spend that two, three years doing something else, being more productive in other areas, right? Versus trying to prove something that it is a fact. It does happen. Like, you know, I don't know. Some people want to go try to figure out gravity. I'm not like, does it exist? How can you utilize this to make a, a better future for the mankind? Can you right. do that instead of you trying to prove that God exists or God doesn't? Like, how is right. that going to help? Like, well, um, what are you going to do? I, mean, I have another friend. Um, I actually, because um, like you were saying, you know, the, the congruencies of our, you know, our influences here, Napoleon Hill. I have another mastermind group that I'm a part of, a community. And they focus on the activity of wealth generation in their masterminds. So they are actively working for wealth generation and community growth. And one gentleman in there um, who I am beginning to work a little more closely with, he mentioned to me that his mentor said, if ever you're faced with a certain kind of dilemma where it's this or this, ask yourself, how possible would it be to do this and this? Right. So while you're while you're 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 going like this, like oh, you know, like do I spend my time to focus on learning this, or do I spend my time, you know, just trying to apply what I feel? Me blend it together happily and peacefully. Create a harmony there, right? There, there's there's no exclusivity on the tasks. You have a have a a, a multi interest. You have a multi facet ability to do many things in any in any given day. And if you spend every day for years on the same thing, the quality and efficiency will gradually dwindle as you only do one thing. So do and. Do this thing and then, you know, halfway through the day, switch it up. Or chunk your day into four or five different things. That way you're constantly fresh, constantly active, right? And then you're constantly feeling good. I agree with that 100%. I think surroundings... Are, are very, very, your, the, the people that are around you is definitely very important that rubs off. Yeah. And I've seen so many people's futures not be as bright as they could have been because their surroundings were not, um, were not in the same wavelength as success principles. So, you know, it's, and it's, it doesn't have to do with the physical environment. You could go to a shitty school. You could be in a shitty neighborhood. It, that, that, a lot of people think just because they go buy a house in a good school district, automatically their kids become smarter and they're going to get better. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a factor, but that's not the only thing. So to me, surrounding the five, ten people that you spend the most amount of time or not even the ones that you spend the most amount of time with, it's most the people that you look up to and you get that they have influence on you. Those are the people that you got to watch out for. Actually, I, I'm really glad you made that last point there. Um, as, as I got a lot of personal experience in, in you know, leaving friends and family. Uh, my partner, on the other hand, she's brand new to the concept of, um, you know, careful of your influence. And I'm glad you made that last point because it may not be the five people you see the most, but who affect you the most. Oh, hell yeah. You may never see your, your brother or sister but that one time a year, man, they disturb you for four or five months, maybe, you know? Exactly. And, and I think that's, that's exactly where the, the, the key element comes in because I always look at everybody's got that one person that they give their ears to and they listen to or whatever this person says they do or what they say has a lot of weight to it. That and one there, they, they hit you here. Even if you're ignoring them, but they still, mm, you know, that's going to cause you some some real big hiccups and road bumps in your mental development and in your activities even. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree with that because I've seen it that, you know, a lot of times, I mean, it, I mean, just think about it. it. To me, logically, it just makes sense. When your car breaks down, you go to auto repair. 
when you your your body breaks down, you you might go to the doctor, right? A chiropractor, physical, whatever, dentist, whatever, some type of a physician you go to, right? When our house breaks down, we call a contractor, someone skills in that. But then when you want to go do business, a lot of times they don't go seek out a business coach. They go listen to their mechanic, to their doctor, to their neighbor who have nothing to do with business. No. That's where it's like mind blowing. Like you need to find that expert and get mentorship from them. Yeah. I think that comes to an old, like I wouldn't say it's totally congruent, but I mean, I don't know if you've heard the old uh, phrase, the Eastern phrase, um, the the frog cannot com the frog in the well cannot comprehend the ocean, right? And so when a frog gets a gets a taste of seawater, they run back to the lily pad to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't know how congruent yeah, yeah, yeah. that is, but like it just seems like you know for anyone who goes, I'm going to go into business now, right? But they their whole lives, their family, their friends, their employees, or they worked and learned and studied to buy another job like like you say a mechanic a doctor right you work 12 years and you you pay essentially for your job right uh, they don't have that sheer understanding that if i want to succeed in business i need to find someone who's been succeeding in business and i agree with that 100 one of those common sense things right and i hate the phrase common sense is not so common because I feel a lot of the world issues that we have, there should be none of them if if more people had common sense and common decency, right? It's it's the common sense to just, I want to do this, ask someone who's doing it. Yeah, that's the best thing. So listen, how do people find you? How do people find me? Well, I, actually, that's, I was going to ask you how you found me. I mean, uh, Listen, my team is always looking for interesting people, and that's where we find people. I, I'm more like I want to look at, I want to find people who have not been blown up to be the big guys with a lot of egos. I'm I'm looking for those stories that are untold. I'm, I will I'm tell you, man, you, you found that. I have been actively trying not to be found for a couple of years. I, uh, you know, every now and then for the past couple of years, people are like make fate make. Make Facebook video lives or YouTube videos. I'm like, I mean, I get what you're saying, but like, I don't want no, the listen, attention. If, you you know? wanna, if you're going to promote the book, if it does help people, you have the duty to get it out. I don't even know if it helps. It. All I know is it, it it helped me. That's why I wrote it. It was cathartic to write it. It was nice to look back on. I don't know if it helps anyone. I've only put it in front of a dozen people, and those people were twice my age, and they all went. This is good. And I said, well, what do you think? Is it going to help anyone? And they go, more than likely, maybe, right? So, like, I never really push for promotion. I never really push for attention. I'm more or less, I'm just taking care of my family, taking care of my couple businesses, and then I'm letting things just unfold naturally. I got my community that I'm growing. Um, before the pandemic, I had a networking business. We had a massively successful first mock event. And then the pandemic hit. So it's okay. When this all lifts, we'll go back to that. But uh, I am being pushed right now. Like This is really like synchronistic here, you reaching out to me. Around the same time you reached out, I got put to. If you don't start gaining exposure, you won't get any further than you already are. And I went, I can't get any further without exposure. I have gone as far as I can. And I kind of did one of these like, Hold my beer. I'm going to stay hidden and do it. <laughs> but I can, right? I mean, I can. You you found me. You found exactly what you're looking for. I have hours and hours of sad trauma story that mean nothing to me today other than I'm glad I went through it and came out happy the other end. You know, so. Look, no, how, definitely. How I'm pretty sure your story is going to inspire others to be able to go through the same journey or at least hang in there till they get to that success level that they're looking for. And it gives them that little extra push, little extra motivation, little extra inspiration on a daily basis. You never know who you're going to help. And to me, it's about that one person because that one could equal to infinity because that one is going to go become a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Now you're helping hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis. 
So to me, you never know what that one is going to do. So you always got to put the good content. But listen, tell them about how to give them the name of the book one more time. Sure. Your uh, handle, how the name of the book them. is Life Qualifies. Um, you can find me on Facebook for Matthew Ferguson. I have a couple YouTube videos, Matthew Ferguson. Uh, my website is mattdreams.com. That's M-A-T-T-E, like the texture. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very easy to get a hold of. If you go on my website, there's a free consult. You can go, you can get 30 uh, minutes with me there. Message me on Facebook. I answer as quickly as I can. Instagram, I will, I will say... I have kind of dropped the ball on the Instagram social media. Um, I check in. I more or less, it's just more or less a place where I look back at my beginning. I check what other people are doing and I see how everybody's smiling. Um, otherwise, really, really. my business is on Zoom. Love it. Matt, keep up the good work, brother. Talk to you soon. Definitely stay safe out there, brother. Thank you so much, Vahid. You have a great day. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye. You too.